Welcome to St. Joseph the Worker Parish. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening anthem is, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather around God's holy altar to celebrate these most beautiful mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, the times that we have turned away, and the times that we have given up on our Lord and Savior, but also recognize the times of grace that he continues to fortify in our lives. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. receive adoption look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters 
that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, a wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love thy neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take two or three others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. For the past several months, there's been a new level of anxiety when it comes down to particularly to this Mass. And that is not necessarily because of celebrating the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, which is beautiful unto itself and the ability to do so is very humbling, but it's because it's being recorded. And if you've ever experienced a time when you were recorded in something, one of the things is, is that you become very critical of yourself because you get to watch it again. Not that I ever do. Like, you know, I'm not that narcissistic that I sit around and say, oh, I wonder what I sounded like. I, I don't do that. My mom does. Anyway, so what happens is, is the fact that not only do you see yourself and being recorded again, but then all of a sudden, so does more than the people that you really know. We have people watching us on this uh, beautiful ce celebration of the Mass from Maryland all the way to Pittsburgh to the Philippines, you know, in different parts of the United States, even all the way to Montoursville. There are people that watch this uh, broadcast of the Mass. And within your reaction, I get to see, you know, 
if I, what I say is funny or if it's not, or if you understand it, sometimes I see his head shaking or sometimes I don't. But I don't see their reactions, but I hear about it. Some people will comment or maybe some people will say, oh, we were talking to so-and-so from someplace, you know, and we had this conversation. So there's a different level of responsibility because not only are you making sure that you're saying the right things, but also that there's a challenge. But for today's gospel, in today's society, this challenge is really evident. It's not okay to burn down buildings. It's not okay to kill people. It's not okay to riot and to steal things that are not yours. It is not okay to do immoral acts. They are sins. And the larger the act and the greater the responsibility that you have, the more mortal that sin is. And without confession, you will go to hell. That's exactly what St. Paul warns us about. And that's exactly what Jesus warns us about. The effects of evil that take place within our world, other people are not responsible for. We are responsible for. We are responsible for it in two ways. The first of which is those who commit those sins. When they commit sins against society, their responsibility is their own. And as they take on that responsibility, whatever that responsibility might be, they take it on with full knowledge and full consent of the will, and then within that moment of hurting others, hurting others' stuff, or whatever the case may be, what happens is they separate themselves from God and from others. They, for whatever reason, though we may not know, all of a sudden make themselves above whatever law, even the divine law of the Ten Commandments, and they place themselves above God. And in doing so, they separate themselves from God. And the eternal effect of that is separation from God, which we know as hell, where heaven is the eternal union of God. That movement that is taking place inspiring people to do exactly that is also teaching them not to love themselves, but rather to be used as tools or as movements in order to separate and divide people even further. That is not love. It's the absence of love. That is definitely not forgiveness. It's the absence of forgiveness. And that is definitely not hope or filled with a future that I look towards, but rather a future of division, of hatred, of separation, a movement that leads us away from what it means to be united. And within that movement, for those who wish to take it on themselves, they need to stop, and we need to change that. We need to listen, and that comes to the second part, because the responsibility is also on us, those who aren't rioting, those who aren't causing problems, quote-unquote. Because as we hear from the first reading, as well as from the gospel, we need to proclaim the truth. And we need to proclaim that truth in love, not in condemnation, not in self-righteousness, but in love for them, knowing where they might end up. No one wants anyone that they love to be separated from them or from God. Because the opposite of love is not anger. The opposite of love is apathy, where I just don't care. I don't care what they do. As long as they don't come here in Williamsport, that's all that matters. I don't care what they do. They can kill themselves for all I care about, as long as they're not invading my house. That I don't care 
is exactly what's happening on the other side. Apathy is the opposite of love, the lack of caring for the other. But the work that we have to do is not a flash-in-the-pan work where we walk up to a bunch of rioters and we scream at them for a while and say, what you're doing is wrong, and expect them to change like that. It doesn't work that way. It works with conversation, with understanding, with listening to their story, and as you listen to their story to try to understand where they might be coming from. You may not agree with it, and you may not understand it, because it may not be our experience. But that's okay. It's their experience that they're sharing with us. It's their journey that they're sharing with us. And what we get to share with them is that there is an opportunity of reconciliation. There's an opportunity and a hope that is rooted not in this world, but in a gift that has been given to us by God through His Son, Jesus Christ. A gift that is given to us every time we come before Him and pray together that whatever it is that separates us from one another and from God may be overcome by the love of Jesus Christ. There's the opportunity for the sacrament of reconciliation where they can be united again with God and turn away from the sin in their lives and in our own. And to have the opportunity to recognize that hope that comes from not from that condemnation or that po finger pointing, but one that comes from a loving God who is willing to send His Son not to condemn the world, but to redeem it. Now, if it was only so simple, even Jesus realized that that wasn't the case. He even said, when we go individually and we win our brother over, praise God. How often do we forgive him? Seven times? No. Seven times, 70 times. They don't believe us? Bring along some friends. Share a community. Listen to the opportunities. Understand what's going on in other people's lives. They may not understand or relate to you, but they might relate to someone else. Praise God. If anything, let them know the teachings of the church, why we have faith, why we receive the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, why we go to confession in order to have our sins forgiven, and to reconcile us with God and another, that we are loved by a God who created us from the moment we were conceived in our mother's womb to the very moment we pass away. God is with us. But there are some, after hearing all of that, and after listening, who just want to embrace the darkness, the hatred, the anger. It's easier. And what do we do? We don't give up. We pray for them. When Jesus is saying, treat them as you would a tax collector, he doesn't mean you turn away from them. That's not what Jesus did. Think about the rich young man who walked away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus prayed for him, even though he walked away from him. And in that prayer, we may not know how God will touch their hearts or their lives. That's not up to us. That's between them and God. All we can do is place them in God's hands. So my brothers and sisters, there are two things we need to do. First of all, don't burn down things. Don't take things that are your own and don't kill anybody. That's bad. But the second thing is to be a witness to a world that longs to know that there's hope, that there are people who care and there is an opportunity to love. When we live as we are called to live, as Catholic Christians within our world, it is then that we can see a change that takes place not only in Maryland, or in Pittsburgh, or in the Philippines, or around our country, 
but a change that takes place within our community here in Williamsport and the greater Williamsport area, in our families, and maybe even in our own lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As ambassadors of God's love, we lift up the needs of our world. We pray for the church, that we may be a light that shines in the darkness, so that others may see the good that we do and give glory to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and all countries of the world, that they may turn away from hatred, from evil, and anything that is base, and come to negotiations and diplomacy, which leads to peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have abandoned the faith, those who have turned away from God, those who have turned away from society and create acts of evil, so that their hearts may be converted and they may come to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and suffering, alone and abandoned, those forgotten by society, those suffering from addiction or depression, for those who have no one to pray for them, that through the outreach of our love, they may recognize a loving God who walks with them as they carry their cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our military personnel are in harm's way and all those affected by war and violence throughout our world. We pray for our firefighters, police, and first responders, and all those who watch over us in civil authority, that they may be led by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an increase of courage to answer the call to priesthood in religious life, fidelity within married life, and chastity within all walks of life, so that true love may be lived. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who have died. that absolved from their sins, they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, you have given us an opportunity in this world to be a light that scatters the darkness. Help us to live our lives according to your will so that we may recognize your presence in others and lead them to understand your presence in their life and in our world. For we ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
As our altar is being prepared, our offertory hymn is Seek Ye First. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of this sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even for, fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, and we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, For the kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we come to receive Christ in spiritual communion, our communion anthem is Many Are the Light Beams. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a, a few announcements uh, as we come into this Labor Day weekend uh, and we pray and take rest from the labors that God has given us. Um, we also come to the beginning of 
the proverbial fall. And uh, within that, not only is there pumpkin spice everything, uh, there's also some changes that are taking place for our mass schedule as well as a variety of other things. So again, um, our masses for the weekday masses uh, will be a little bit different um, and we've been talking about that for about two weeks. Thank you for everybody who chimed in and gave us some insights into that. Uh, so uh, please look at the bulletin uh, for those changes within our weekday mass schedule. And then also, uh, thank you to all those who registered for religious education. Uh, that gives us a great number in order for us to order the books, which will provide us online access and all that other stuff. So if you have not done so, please do so as soon as you can um, in order for us to make sure that our numbers are correct uh, for those ordering of the books and the online access for all of our religious ed programs. Also, uh, if you're interested in our adult ed programs, uh, information concerning that is also in the bulletin. Um, along with many other opportunities to grow in the faith. Um, there's also a thing that's uh, happening this past week and started with the new school year, and that is what's known as remote learning sites. And here at St. Joseph the Worker, we are one of those remote learning sites for Stevens Elementary. Um, so we have a nice group of little ones from kindergarten, first, second, and third grade who show up on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays and uh, we help them with their homework and with their online learning and we play some games and have a great time. But we're in need of some volunteers. So if you're interested, if you're, a high, if you're a college student who is taking online courses and as in an education major and you want to bolster your resume, this is a great way of doing so. If you're a person who is uh, interested in just uh, spending some time with little ones, we'd love to have you. Um, and we'd help you through all that process of trying to get you with clearances and all that. But again, it's just a great opportunity to share our faith and just uh, share a little bit of love with these little ones who share it back so wonderfully. Uh, so again, please uh, give the office a call if you're interested in being part of that learning community. And also, if you have any extra like kindergarten, first, second, and third grade books or games or things like that, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Um, we can only do so much with what we got. Uh, so again, we'd really appreciate having you and any extra help that you can provide. And then um, with and all of that, just a reminder that on Labor Day, our Mass is at 9 o'clock, um, as it is on every civil holiday. Uh, so this coming Monday, our Mass is at 9 o'clock here in the main church. Um, this and many other things are located in our bulletin. Uh, so if you look for one online, um, or if you'd like to come and take one home with you, uh, we do have some paper copies as well. Um, so please keep in touch, and uh, we look forward to spending the rest of the uh, fall and trying to figure out what is going to happen because... God only knows that, and we're just going to try to work with what we got. So thank you for all your help and for all those who help us in many ways. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As we come to the end of this Holy Mass, we'd ask you... For those who wish to receive, to please come forward to the stations that are on the altar rail. Mm -hmm.